Although this is the sixth part of the series Inspiration from the Past, this particular message is actually not from the past, it's from the present for the present. It's a message and insight from me to you about a technique that I use to cope with worry. And I've helped others with this very simple technique, and I'm hoping that it will help you as well. And my wife and I had arranged a little time away for rest and relaxation. We'd arranged this many months ago and were then concerned that we might not be able to travel and concerned also about being out of Israel at this particular time. But thankfully, we were able to travel and at the moment we are away. But any of you who've been away or those of you who are listening to this from outside of Israel know very well that often the anxiety levels and the degree of worry when you're away, when you're outside of Israel, is much greater than it is when you're there. And we've certainly found that when we're there among our people, our friends, our nation, experiencing it together with everybody, the level of, of worry and anxiety is lower than it is when you're away, somewhat on your own, reading the news and, and worrying. So how do we cope with worry? And firstly, it's important to appreciate that worrying is not necessarily a contradiction to bitachon. It doesn't mean you lack faith because you worry. One can do both. One can worry and have faith. Of course, the very ultimate of faith and bitachon is not to worry at all to be completely relaxed that one is in the hands of God. But we are human and it's normal to worry and, and sometimes necessary to worry. We see that when Yaakov had to face Esav, he was worried. And although criticized a little bit for that worry, it's normal. And that's why we're told about it. And he had to prepare three different strategies. He had to prepare a diplomatic strategy to meet Esav. He had to prepare a military strategy to meet Esav. And he had to engage in prayer in Tefillah. He had to do those three things, which is what we're doing today. So there's certainly a place to be concerned, to be worried about the future and to make plans, but not to have that worry consume one, not to have that worry completely undermine us, drain us of our focus, of our attention and of our life force. That's when it becomes incredibly destructive and where this mechanism can help. And the idea that I want to share with you, and hopefully some of you will find it valuable, is that we worry about the future. We don't worry about the present. I had in the time of South Africa when there were a lot there was a lot of crime, a lot of carjacking, people were being robbed of their cars at gunpoint. Very often it was women, it was at night very often. It was terrifying. But in interviewing many people who experienced a carjacking, the common theme was, I'd worried about this for years. I'd been scared about the possibility of carjacking, that I would be in the car alone or with my children and I would be held at gunpoint. It's a terrifying thought. But in the moment there was no terror. In the moment I was calm and collected and somehow knew exactly what to do. We worry about the future. We don't worry in the moment. And that's because Hashem gives each of us every resource we need to cope with the situation in which we find ourselves at that moment. When we are worrying about the future, we're looking at a possible event in the future with the resources of the present. The resources that Hashem has given me in the present are the resources I need to cope with the present. When I will get to that situation in the future, which may be a confrontational situation, it may be a situation of Yaakov facing Esav, who's out to wipe him out and to kill him. It may be a case of Israel facing Hezbollah or Iran, and with them intent on wiping us out. Those are moments of terror, moments of fear, but at those moments there won't be fear. At those moments, Hashem will give each of us the resources we need to cope relatively calmly with it. That's what Hashem does. We have all the resources we need to cope with the situation of the moment, but we don't get the resources in advance. We're not stored up with all the resources of what we might need to do in the future. Hashem gives it to us as we need it. So as I'm in this particular situation, talking about myself in a situation of relative calm and relaxation on a vacation, Hashem doesn't give me the resources I need to face the stress and the tension of what, what might be in the future. But what I do know is that when I'm in that situation in the future, Hashem will give me everything I need to be able to cope with that in as calm a manner as is possible. And so that's the nature of worry. Worry is looking at the future with the resources of the present. And to just understand that, I can't think about how I would cope in the future with the resources I have in the moment, because the resources I will have in the future will be a different set of resources and will be provided by Hashem to cope with that. And so with that, I hope that everybody is able to 
find some level of calm, trust and faith to understand that fear and worry is normal. Faith is the antidote, but faith means an understanding that when the time comes that I'm called upon to do something difficult, Hashem will give me all the resources I need to face that difficulty and be successful.